Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. Today we're going to be building this fully responsive two column row. You can see that if I reduce the size of this row now, the image shrinks, the text starts to shrink, all the spacing just works and I can keep reducing this down right to the point where it breaks to tablet view and I can keep going again. I can go smaller and smaller and this reduces all the way down to the smallest possible phone view. I've actually set this at about 320 pixels. So a really good and useful thing to know how to do. I've been asked a lot about how uh, to get an image into a column in the most responsive and the most accessible way. The temptation is just to use a background image, but if you do that, not only does it not count towards your SEO, but it also makes it difficult for people with adaptive technology because by using the background image class in CSS, this conveys no information such as the title or the description. So this is the best way to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it all the way through. You'll find the CSS in the description. Let's get on and get this built. I'm starting with a brand new installation of WordPress. So far I've installed Divi and I've created a single page which I've assigned to be my home page. So now we can go into pages, all pages, we can find home page and we can click here on edit with Divi. Once the builder comes up, I'm going to choose build from scratch and I'm going to click to insert a two column row. I'd like this row to be a little bit wider. So I'm actually going to go into the settings, into design and sizing and where I've got this size to be a maximum width of 1200 and a width of 80%. I'm going to change this 1200 to also be 80% and this is going to uh, make my row a little bit wider. Another very important step while we're here is we need to click on equalize column heights, which is going to be important later on when we come to using our images. We can then close this dialog. Uh, I would also like to give a class name to this row, and this will help us to be able to target it when we use some custom CSS later on. So to do that, we go into row settings again, into advanced, into custom ID and classes, and I'm going to call it DC to col for two column and I'm going to click the tick to save. Um, I'm then going to go into the section into background and I'm going to set a light grey background so that we can see a little bit more what's going on with our row. Then I'm going to come into the row also choose background and I'm going to set a white background for the row. The first module that we want to add is a text module so I'm going to click add new module and I'm going to search for a text module. And once that's inserted, I'm going to paste in some Latin text. We now need to sort out the spacing for this column. By default, Divi puts some spacing at the top and bottom of the row, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go into settings, into design and into spacing. Now, not very helpfully, it doesn't actually tell you what spacing it sets. But if you do go into padding and you set this to zero, you can see that the inbuilt padding disappears and that's what we want to achieve. This means I can now go into the module and I can set the spacing or padding is what I'm going to use for the spacing around my text. So in the module setting in design, we can go to spacing. Now, because I'm going to use fluid text, in other words, I'm going to use text that changes with the size of the viewport. I want to set my padding units in M units, E-M-M. -M. This means that as the font size changes, the spacing will change accordingly. So I'm going to come in here and for my top padding, I'm going to use 6M and I'm going to also use that for my bottom. And I'm going to, for the left and right padding, I'm going to go with 4M. So I'm going to click again to add 4M's left and right padding. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on the green tick. So now that we've set up our spacing, we can look at adjusting the size of this using our CSS clamp function. Now, those of you that have um, followed my tutorials before know that I like to use a site called Fluid Responsive Font Size Calculator. I'll put a link. It's from a company called Web Semantics, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Very easy to use, and we can just run through and set this up now. So the first thing we want to make sure is that we've got pixels selected. The selector that we're going to use is the selector that we gave to the row, which I've typed in here. The property that we want is font size and the range. We're going to go from 12 pixels for the smallest font size that we want at the smallest screen size, all the way up to 20 pixels that we want for the largest screen size. 
And then in here, we can actually define those screen sizes. So I'm choosing to go from 320 pixels from the smallest, basically the smallest practical phone, all the way up to 1920 pixels for a larger display. I'm then going to make sure I've got clamp selected and Safari fix selected. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that it's created the CSS for us. And we simply click on copy CSS. We can then go into our uh, demo. We need to come out of the Visual Builder. So I'm going to make sure I've saved my page. I'm going to exit the Visual Builder and I'm going to add my CSS in the customizer. Now, those of you that watch my uh, CSS tutorial will know that there's lots of different places you can add the CSS. I like to add it in the customizer while I'm building because I can then see what's going on. Quite often, I then copy it and paste it into a child theme later on. But if you do that, you have to go backwards and forwards from the child theme uh, to the site that you're building. So I find it easier just to go into the theme customizer, into the additional CSS section and simply paste in my CSS. And there we are. We've immediately sorted out the spacing and the font sizing for our font. Uh, and this is the clamp statement that we generated in the calculator. That done, we can publish this change. We can come out of the customizer and we can start to think about the image column. Now, this is the bit of the tutorial that is a bit trickier. Now, many people will just say, oh, well, it's very easy. All we need to do is enable the Visual Builder. We want to put an image in that column. So we'll just pop in an image module. We'll choose our image from the library. Let's say this New York one and we'll upload it. And the problem is that doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because we've equalized the height of these columns. This left hand column has been sized to accommodate our text and the spacing. But the right hand column will preserve the aspect ratio of the image and therefore you end up with this white space at the bottom. So you might think, well, we can come in and find some settings to change that. So no, nothing in here. Um, in spacing. Oh, there's one here, show space below image. Let's get rid of that. No, it still doesn't work. We've still got an issue. And in fact, to fix this, uh, we need to go in and use some CSS. Now, there is another option which people might say, which is, well, we won't use an image module then. We'll just use a background image in that column. And yes, you can do that. And yes, it will work to a degree. So we could go in here. We could choose background. We could choose image and we could pop our image in as a background. And at first glance, that looks like it works perfectly. The problem is it doesn't work responsively because if, for example, we go and have a look at the tablet view, you can find that the image has been just crumpled up to nothing and the same also on the mobile view. And the reason for that is that this is basically an empty column. So no size has been allocated to it in desktop mode. Because we've equalized the column heights, it makes the height of the column full and the image fits. However, when you go to tablet, as the two columns are no longer next to each other, it doesn't maintain the equal height. So you end up with this problem of the image being constrained at the bottom. So you have to go in, you have to do something about it. People go in here, they'll put in a text module, put maybe no text in that text module. So get rid of all the text. Um, give it some padding so that the text module's there, but you've given it some padding so that it fills up the whole height. Um, and it kind of works, but it's not really a very great solution. So as you can see, that now works, but it's not brilliant. The other problem with using a background image is that the background image property of CSS doesn't count, if you like, towards SEO, and it doesn't help anyone that is using any kind of assistive technology for like a screen reader, for example. So it's 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 really not useful to put an image as an image background unless it's purely decorative. Is it you know if it's a pattern or something? But if that image tells part of your story, putting it in as a background is a bad idea. So we're going to look at a third way, uh, which is the way that I like to do things. It does involve a little bit of CSS, but it will make our image responsive and accessible at the same time. So let's do that. So we can go back into the column again, back into the background, and we can delete our background image. We're going to go back to putting in an image module. So I'm going to put in an image module here. I'm going to choose my background and we now need to do something about getting rid of this white space at the bottom. 
In order to do that, I'm going to give this image an ID. And the ID that I'm going to use is DC image fill. And as I say, this allows me to target this uh, image with some CSS. So once we've done that, we can save again. We can come out of the Visual Builder and we can go back to the customizer to add our CSS. So we're going to paste this in below the CSS that we added before. And immediately the image fills the entire column. Although actually looking at it, you can see that it's somewhat distorted. So let me explain what's going on. Divi displays images by actually putting three things into the column. So the first is the image module. Then within the image module, there is a, a wrapper to contain the image. And then within the wrapper, there is the image itself. So this bit of CSS here is telling that the uh, module that we gave an ID of DC image fill to, it's then targeting the image wrapper inside that module, and it's then targeting the image inside that image wrapper. So there's three different selectors here that are all being set to a height of 100%. And as I say, that's fine. It's ended up doing what we wanted, which is to fill the column with the image, but the image is also somewhat distorted. Luckily, that is also pretty easy to fix. A little bit more CSS using the object fit property. And if we paste that in, we can see the image is fixed. So what we've actually done is cropped, we've scaled the image to fit the column and we've cropped the sides off left and right so that everything just works. Now that we've done that, we can publish this. We can come out of the customizer and we'll find that what we've built is a fully responsive two column section. If we go into um, the responsive mode here, we'll find that as we make it smaller, everything works, the font scale, the column scale, everything, the spacing scales. And then when we get to the stage where it changes over to a tablet view, it still works. We still have the font at the top and we have the image at the bottom and we can scale further. We can keep on going all the way down to phone size. And we've created our, our fully responsive two column section with an accessible image. You'll find that when you hover on it, you get the title New York comes up. So that's fully accessible to screen readers and it's fully responsive. Well, I hope you found this lesson useful. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.